All right, I want to start this video with a real quick shout out to White Mummy. He's an officer in New Nation, a, a good friend of mine, and he created that new intro for me. Appreciate it, man. You're a genius. It's beautiful. Anyway, let's get to it. War number five. We got some good matchups this war. So one and two, GT40 and DSVG faced off. And uh, I'll tell you this, man. I, I, I know a lot of people in DSVG or a few people in DSVG. They're good people. Uh, I've got nothing but respect for GT40. I don't really know anybody in GT40 personally. But, uh, you know, I've kind of been rooting for DSVG this season. I think that uh, nobody probably before the season started thought that they would be, you know, a top three contender. Maybe, maybe they did. I don't know. But uh, it's, been, it's been awesome watching them uh, dominate. But GT40 is a buzzsaw, and uh, DSVG ran face first into that. They had their worst war of the season, I think. 11 deaths is definitely unlike them, but um, GT40 can, GT40 can put a lot of pressure on you. So anyway, GT40 stays unbeaten. DSVG gets their first loss. Noon uh, improves to 4-1, and one, a, a two-death clear. I mean, these guys are just absolutely crushing it right now. Uh, I think last war they had only one death. Uh, they came into this war ranked third, and they beat the alliance uh, that we lost to last war. So X5E only died seven times in the previous war against us. We lost that one. And, uh, yeah, I guess they just decided that they didn't want to compete in this one. 2-23, to 23, um, Noon is going to move up to number two overall. Uh, which you guys will see here in just a second. JA um, rebounded. I, I believe that they lost last war, uh, but they faced the previously unbeaten GGIR, and uh, what was that about a buzzsaw? So GGIR, uh, I've been talking about how their num all the numbers say that they've been very fortunate to be 4-0, and uh, I believe that they started this season in Tier 2. This sometimes happens. You start in Tier 2, you get easier matchups, and you're able to really uh, you get off to a really strong start. They got off to a 4-0 start. And when that happens, you're going to climb the war rating leaderboard. The higher your war rating gets, uh, the more potent alliances you're going to start matching. That's exactly what happened. I think that this is probably their first taste of what legitimate elite war, alliance war, is, is like uh, up against JA, a perennial top five alliance. And uh, 2-25 two, two to 25 is, is definitely an ass beating. So... Um, okay, number five overall heading into this war was Matrix, and look at that. Matrix and Legion, they tied on deaths, five apiece, and I actually don't know if Legion missed any nodes. I presume that Legion just uh, lost on the uh, fight duration tiebreaker, but anyway... Matrix wins uh, in a 5-5 five to five score. TCN, uh, they fell from number 2 to number 6 last after last war, and uh, they kind of rebound here. So they get um, another good, solid, clear 3 deaths against PBT. Um, LVT, our alliance, faced Sweeta's alliance. Uh, this war was 3-3 three to three through 120 fights. And... Um, when I look at this score, and maybe you'll think that this is just me making excuses or having a bias, I don't know. When I look at this score, and knowing that we got off to a 3-3 three to three start through 120 fights apiece, and we finished with six additional deaths from that point on, they finished with only two additional deaths, to me that speaks to the experience. Sweetas Alliance has a lot of good, strong, skilled players that have experience. We have a lot of good, strong, skilled players about half of our alliance, this is their first full season in, uh, you know, facing Masters level competition. But regardless, uh, big fan of Sweetest Channel, um, really rooting for them to have a strong season. It was fun to match them. SSX uh, gets a, a nice little layup there, um, 7, to 60, uh, 7 to 68 against LGDL, okie dokie. Um, number 9, XK9, a good strong clear, 6 deaths against JWin. I think that JWIN is a kind of a perennial fringe Masters alliance. They're usually in P1. Uh, so I at least recognize them, but 6-36, uh, to 36, pretty strong victory there. And then uh, for Loki, uh, they got an alliance, an Asian alliance uh, called Old Driver. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, 12-32. to 32, So um, they've, they've, they've gotten some good matchups. Uh, and then SGA, 13 Versus 14, SGA drops that one 11 to 5. Um, all right, let's move on to the ranking updates. 
All right, so obviously GT40 improves to 5-0. and They stay number one, and uh, they did move up in strength of schedule having faced. Now, um, they just seem to face everybody that's like ranked second and third. But uh, anyway, they are first in efficiency, first in strength of schedule. They have actually died uh, less than half the number of times of the second ranked uh, alliance, alliance in terms of efficiency. So GT40 is just on another level than everybody else at the moment. But uh, New Nation continues their really, really strong season. They improved to 4-1. and one. Uh, I did say this earlier, but yeah, they jumped up to number two, and I think that that's very fair. Uh, second in efficiency, tied with JA, but they are sixth in strength of schedule. But the, the wins uh, that they've had, I, I think, propelled them above JA. JA also has had a really strong season. They've actually kind of gotten unlucky with some of their matchups. They're second in efficiency, but also second in strength of schedule, and they've dropped two wars. So despite losing, wait, they just won. But uh, yeah, they improved to three and two over two and two, and they do move up a spot. DSVG drops from two to four, and it's mainly because they died 11 times in this past war, and they dropped from second in efficiency to fifth in efficiency. So that's why they uh, they got leapfrogged by uh, Noon and JA. Uh, and then everybody else, uh, 5 through 10, stayed exactly the same. You guys can pause the screen if you wanted to take a look at their uh, efficiency and strength of schedule ranks. Uh, okay, so 11 through 20. HCK moves up three spots. They're four and one. They're having a good season here. Um, you guys can see though that uh, kind of like GGIR, they, they're just they're not clearing very efficiently. Uh, they definitely have had a couple of really strong wars in, in the low single digits, but um, it seems like they fluctuate quite a bit. But anyway, 16th in efficiency, 18th in strength of schedule, and uh, and yet they are 11th. So typically, if you can see a huge gap between their actual rank and their efficiency and strength of schedule average, if you kind of take the two and average them out, uh, that usually means that they're just kind of uh, getting a, a points boost from like an outsized uh, record, like four and one despite being 16th in efficiency is kind of an outlier. So uh, good for them, of course. All that matters ultimately is that you keep winning, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, they, they've, they've uh, had kind of a soft schedule. Salty, um, they were one in three. They just had a strong clear. They only died four times, and that propelled them all the way up to eighth in efficiency and eleventh in strength of schedule. Uh, throughout the season, they have had a pretty difficult schedule. Anyway, uh, they were just struggling to to grab wins. But um, after this last one, they do get a win. They improved to two and three. They're eighth in efficiency, and they jump up six spots. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the alliances. Uh, that were behind them losing as well. So um, LVT, my alliance, you know, we dropped another one to Sweetas Alliance. That's our second loss in a row. Uh, we moved down to 13th. And the reason that we're still in the top 15 despite a 2-3 and three record is just because we're not dying that much. Um, we're top 10 in the world in terms of clearing efficiently. We're at 8th tied with Salty. And um, with our match against Sweetas Alliance, who is ranked 7th going into this war, we jumped up to 15th in strength of schedule. Okay, and then X5E, I'm sure they'll be super thrilled, uh, but they fall three spots behind LVT. So they did just beat us in the prior war. <clears throat> they also have beaten for Loki this season. And the reason that they keep fluctuating so much is because it seems like they either have a really strong clear somewhere in the you know mid to low you know five to seven death range, like they cleared for Loki with five deaths, they cleared us with seven deaths, won both of those wars, or on the flip side they die over twenty times. There's like no in between with them. So the war one they faced DSVG, they died twenty four times or something like that. Uh, this past war they faced uh, New Nation and they died twenty three times. So. They're just tanking their efficiency rating, and um, I'm sure that they can and will argue that uh, if they're in an alliance, if they're in a matchup that they think that they can't win, then they're just going to stop boosting or something like that. And uh, <clears throat> look, every alliance can run their alliance the way that they want to, but in masters, points points do matter a lot. Um, a lot of times, you know, there could be separation of just five deaths between uh, Platinum 1 and Masters, uh, you know, the last spot Masters. So it doesn't make sense to me 
maybe I'm just, um, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something, but uh, but yeah, tw I mean, 23 deaths is, is really inexcusable for a Masters level alliance. And we know that they're a good alliance because they've had really strong clears against really strong defenses. But anyway, I'm not talking shit about X5V. That's not what this is. I'm really just trying to explain why they dropped three spots behind LBT because I know at least a couple of them that have commented on my videos are going to say, you know, oh, oh, well, oh, taters, you know, you jig the algorithm to, you know, you just, that doesn't make any sense, you know, LVT is ahead of us, we beat LVT, LOL, it's whatever. So, anyway, that's the explanation. Uh, let's move on. For Loki, um, they improved to 15th, they did just get a win, uh, 12 deaths, so it seems like they're, they're, you know, they're averaging around 11 deaths a war, um, and I, you know, I don't know what their best of the season is. I think it's like eight, but, um, they do move up with a win against, uh, old driver and, um, they did drop in strength of schedule though, because old driver is, uh, not a competitive master's level lines. So, uh, 12th in efficiency, 17th in strength of schedule, but they are top 15 now. And then MIBR, um, they are two and three. They moved up four spots mainly because they had a decent clear here. And uh, they jumped up to 11th in efficiency. Uh, but you guys can see that their strength of schedule is fairly weak, at least for the top 25 alliances. And then GGIR, um, look, we kind of knew this, right? Like if, if you're in Masters and you're, you're in five to six wars, uh, like that's the score, five to six and stuff like that. You're in really tight wars. And uh, there's this hot alliance that's, that's really rising up the war rating leaderboard. They're 4 and 0. They're off to a great start, but they're averaging 15 deaths a war. You, you kind of you know what's going to happen. And uh, yeah, they, they, they ran into a real Masters alliance. And um, this, I think 17th is a very fair place to put them. I think they're probably a top 20 alliance right now. But, um, but yeah. Uh, 24th in efficiency, 21st in strength of schedule. Uh, that that's not elite in my opinion. But uh, D69 they drop two spots. They're two and three. And then SGA, uh, kind of the more confounding, the most confounding alliance on this list. The last two updates, uh, last week or I'm sorry, last update they they jumped up like eight spots or something like that. And uh, and then here they they drop seven spots. So I honestly I kind of I went over the numbers again just to see if there was a mistake, and there's not. The bottom line is alliances, you know, thirteen through twenty are very close in the war points, the total war points. And uh, yeah, SGA just you know that they dropped they dropped one, and they're twenty fifth in strength of schedule. You guys can see so. That's what happens, but the, the point differential between 13 and 20 is very slim. So any of these alliances, any of those alliances in this range, could make big, uh, big moves up or down. Um, you know, war to war. So anyway, that's the update. This one was the longest one by far so far. Uh oh, am I getting into tater territory? I hope not. But uh, hopefully we can get these videos down to, you know, six, seven minutes or something like that. But I do like to provide some commentary and context. So anyway, leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're mad at me, go ahead and let me know. And uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next update.